guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another book review roundup. Um, I have two of these previously on my channel so I will link them down below and in the i card there. You guys seem to like them which makes me very happy because I love talking about books with others. I also do post on my uh, Instagram. I will link that down below as well. I can put a little image right here of the highlights. I like sharing what book I'm currently reading, thoughts as I'm starting, thoughts throughout that kind of thing. So feel free to follow along that way. But without any further ado, let's get into my six book review roundups and recommendations for August, September, and October. This gets five out of five from me. So this is The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I have another novel by Kate Quinn in this roundup because I enjoyed The Alice Network so much and I read this one first. This is my friend's copy. She loaned it to me during quarantine actually and I finally got around to reading it. The Alice Network is historical fiction for those of you who like historical fiction and it flips back and forth between two main POVs, two females in the book in different differing ages, a younger female in her early 20s, I believe, and then a woman in her later 60s, I want to say. It mostly flips between England and France, which I love because I have visited both and I love both countries so much, so it's a nice reference point. I love reading books based in either England or France, so the fact that this flipped between both locations was very interesting to me in itself. You get to the perspective of both of the different world wars during and afterwards, the aftermath of them, and how how the wars affected two different individuals living in different places at different ages. I absolutely loved the characters. I loved the pace throughout the book. This one really drew me in immediately, which is very, very hard to do with the book. The characters were just so lovely that you just wanted to root for them throughout. Of course, there are other characters that come in and out throughout the book, but the main two POVs I loved. I really enjoyed both of them. I enjoyed how they interacted with one another, and I truly can't find any fault in this book. The rest of my ratings you'll see are fairly harsh. Um, so the fact that this one gets a 5 out of 5 is incredible. Highly recommend one of my top reads of 2020 thus far. The next two books we have here are ones that I didn't enjoy so much. Um, this one here is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Overall, I'm giving the book a 3 out of 5, which isn't great. I really loved the concept of the book. It deals with racism and gentrification in a certain specific borough in New York City. I don't remember what borough now because I read it a few months ago, a month and a half ago maybe. Um, so I loved the concept and I think that it could have gone a little darker and more detailed for my liking. It felt a little bit like surface level, at least for me who's used to reading stuff from like Stephen King. Very much darker material. I thought that the concept itself was a great concept that could have been taken further. Flips back between two POVs, two different neighbors in the same neighborhood. One of them is a white male, one of them is a black female. I just didn't really like either of their inner thoughts, any of the descriptors. I just didn't like the actual way it was written and the characters themselves, but I liked the theming. I did want to keep reading in order to find out what happened because it is a type of mystery suspense novel. I also felt that the spoiler romance between the two characters, the main two POVs, was very obvious and poorly played out. So. 3 out of 5, as I'm saying this, I feel like I should have done like a 2.8 or something because I honestly wouldn't recommend this. I think that concept is cool, but it just wasn't executed how I wanted it to be. Um, so for that reason, it gets a 3 out of 5. Would not recommend. The next one I have here is a rather low rating again, getting a 2 out of 5, so I enjoyed it even less than the When No One Is Watching. Um, this is called Cold Storage by David Coop, and it is from the screenwriter of Jurassic Park, which is a, a very well-known movie in Hollywood. I love that movie. I think it's a cool concept. I did purchase this towards the beginning of quarantine because it does deal with like deadly viruses and the pandemic and like spooky mystery type stuff, which is usually my vibe, but I just did not like the book. So overall, I found the book very meh. It's a very cool concept, and I actually enjoyed the prologue more than the actual story. So the prologue of the book is probably just like a chapter or two long to be honest, but it deals with the actual 
beginning stages of the virus, how it came to be. This was kind of the reverse of what I normally find with books. I was very interested within the first 50, 100 pages, and then it completely lost me for the rest of the book. Didn't really enjoy the characters. They really did nothing for me. I hate giving books poor reviews, but I just really didn't enjoy this one, and I wouldn't recommend it. Now I have a book that I did very much enjoy. This is The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Emma Donahue is the same author that wrote Room. Room Room is one of my all-time favorite novels ever. I think it's so well written, such a cool so concept, very dark, very disturbing, but I think it's such an incredible read. I highly recommend it to you if you are into horror fiction or mystery, but like definitely the darker side of it because it really is detailed and disturbing. This is a completely different genre for the author. So this is a historical fiction novel. Um, it covers a very, very specific period in time, actually between like 48 and 72 hours. I don't remember exactly how many hours are told throughout the novel, but it's a very specific period period in time in um, Ireland and I also love Ireland. I love any book pretty much that takes place in Europe. I visited Ireland as well so I have a little bit of a reference point there which I do enjoy because it helps me to better visualize characters and events, places they're referencing, etc. Helps me feel more enveloped in the storyline. So this does take place within a very specific 72 hour period I want to say in Ireland. It is one singular POV throughout which I think is very interesting. I don't always love that if I don't love that specific individual's POV but this individual I really did. I was rooting for her. I loved the descriptors throw. I loved the characters. I found this book so easy to picture. This is probably the clearest imagery that I had in my head out of any of the books I'm talking about here. So it is a hospital work a nurse and a bunch of patients and a female doctor and a nursing assistant essentially is what it's focusing on during a massive flu epidemic breakout in this town in Ireland and it is a little bit upsetting warning but it's really really good and well worth it in my opinion so highly recommend 4.7 out of 5 from me next up we have the huntress from Kate Quinn this is the same author that wrote the Alice Network so I had posted my rave reviews of the Alice Network on Instagram and a ton of people recommended, maybe three or four people, recommended the Huntress to me. So I literally the day after finishing Alice Network went out, purchased this, started reading it, and devoured it very, very quickly. This for me gets a 4.5 out of 5, whereas the Alice Network got a 5 out of 5. I enjoyed this one a little bit less, mainly just because of the characters. This novel does flip through three POVs, which I think is what had me a little lost in the beginning. When you have three or four point of views in a novel, it takes a lot longer to get into it, in my opinion, to get to know each character. I didn't care for the young teenage girl storyline and I didn't care for the older male journalist, but I absolutely loved the storyline of the one female individual who fought in World War II as a Russian fighter jet pilot. I got so into her storyline. I loved her narration so, so much throughout um, and I really looked forward to every chapter that she was narrating. I just loved it. I am definitely interested in learning more about Russian fighter jet pilots and females in the war in general. If you're also into historical fiction, Atomic Girls, I read that one two or three years ago now and I absolutely love that novel so I'll link that down below as well just as a reference point. If you liked The Huntress or The Alice Network, you'd probably like The Atomic Girls. I think that's what it's called. And it just made me interested in reading more about females' roles specifically in World War II and World War I even, um, and the aftermath, etc. So I was very interested in her storyline, but not as interested in the others. Of course, if you've read The Alice Network or if you've read The Huntress and you haven't read one or the other, read both. They're incredible and I will read anything else Kate Quinn throws my way. I'm very into her as an author and the characters that she creates in her mind. So, so cool. Highly recommend her stuff. And then it wouldn't be a book review without a Stephen King novel. I think I've had one in every single one of my reviews thus far. Um, so this is his newest novel called The Institute. I want to preface this by saying I'm a big Stephen King fan. I like a lot of his stuff, but there's also some of his stuff that I don't like. So this was one that I was kind of in the middle with. I give it a three out of five overall. The Institute is in third person POV throughout, which I think is somewhat limiting to a 
reader because you can't really know the exact inner thoughts of each character. It kind of limits the overall narration of the story. I much prefer a first person POV, flipping back and forth through multiple characters, but that's just personal preference. That said, I really did enjoy the main characters, the main two characters, Luke and Avery, especially Avery, the young boy with telekinesis. Uh, the whole book deals with young children with either telekinesis or telepathy. They call it TP and TK, I believe. It reminded me a lot of Stranger Things in terms of the area that it took place, the age of the kids, and then the role of the adults versus the kids. It was very much a Stranger Things vibe. Big Stranger Things fan, so I did enjoy that. I guess it was just the actual execution and the ending kind of let me down but the characters themselves were very lovable and I enjoyed the overall concept so that is why it gets a 3 out of 5 for me maybe even a 3 0.5 or 3.3 .3. I was pretty harsh in my ratings because I want to be realistic about what I really love um, and that just wasn't one that I really love or would read again. So the three that I didn't love as much were The Institute, When No One Is Watching, and Cold Storage. And then my top three that I really really loved and would recommend are The Huntress, The Alice Network, and The Pull of the Stars with The Alice Network being my top five out of five read from the roundup. Let me know what you think of these, let me know if you've read any of them, what your thoughts are if you totally disagree with me about something or agree with me about something else. I love talking about books and sharing opinions. That is all that I have for you guys today. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I hope that you either have or had an absolutely awesome day. Bye!